crazy how, how much these groups have grown and how quickly they did. How quickly into your experience did you realize that I, I really got something here? This is going to be a, a major focus of mine because it's got to take a lot of your time. Uh, it definitely does. So uh, basically, once uh, my group reached a couple of thousands, I, uh, I kind of whenever I post, I get a lot of reach. So it's all about the reach and the engagement in the group. And uh, basically, that's when I realized I can provide more value even if, let's say, I wanted to sell something, it's, uh, it's free traffic, pretty much. Free traffic, and it builds authority, it builds your branding, and uh, more importantly, you get to help entrepreneurs, and you get to talk with entrepreneurs all day long. Nice, all right, welcome, guys. Um, so, you know, I've I, uh, been doing just, I've been in the industry for a while, but this year I really started focusing uh, on ISAC training and I kind of came into contact with, with all of you at, at various points. And I've just been blown away by the value of the conversations that are happening in your communities. Why don't we start by go, starting with Steve going this way uh, and, and talk about uh, what your community is all about. Where, give me some of the essential numbers and, uh, and yeah, start with that. Yeah, so we do have like a Facebook group that's called e-commerce elites mastermind. So all we do there is just focus on e-commerce, Facebook media buy. We grew, we started this group about back in this year, like March, April. We grew it like organically to about 30,000 people this like yesterday. So Amazing. that's what that's we so do. E-commerce yeah. empires. No, e-commerce elites. E-commerce elites, that's right. Yeah, e-commerce elites mastermind. Very it's cool. uh, all what we do, yeah. Nice. Uh, I have uh, uh, 12 groups or so. Uh, one of the main one I'd say is the Facebook ad buyers group. Uh, I started it about six years ago. Uh, I let it grow organically for about five years until this year, uh, and it, it was up to 15,000 by then. Uh, then I actually did paid traffic uh, for about 30,000 members. Uh, then I've let it go organic since then to re-optimize quality, which I guess we can kind of get into later. But uh, and then I think and I have like 10 other groups or so, and I think total there's around 80 or 90,000 people. Interesting. Something I didn't like know that. you had other groups. I just thought it was the advertisers. Yeah, Twelve. Group. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Busy man. <laughs> How about you, Nick? Uh, my group's called Ecom Empires, and it's been about a year now since I started it. Organic growth, it's uh, just closing in on 37,000 members. So, uh, and it's a group that's all really just about building a community around all things e-commerce, uh, using you know, the tools and resources we all have available, providing the training to be able to build an online business for people anywhere in the world and just create that type of success and get the motivation and you know, whatever people in different needs have and just be able to come there and have that be like a home and a community to promote success and opportunity for people all around the world. Cool. So uh, my group is called Momentum Marketing Tribe, and uh, pretty much the group, I wanted to move all my following from my personal profile, from YouTube channel, from Twitter, all to one place, and that was the idea behind it. And uh, it's pretty much focused on direct response marketing when it comes to e-com, lead gen, and uh, everything white hat related. Momentum, and it used to be called Always Listen to Mo. That's the hashtag. I like, Always <laughs> Listen to Mo is the hashtag. I like it, very cool. So. Did you get like, it, it's, it's just sort of crazy how, how much these groups have grown and how quickly they did. How quickly into your experience did you realize that I, I really got something here. This is going to be a, a major focus of mine because it's got to take a lot of your time. Uh, it definitely does. So uh, basically once uh, my group reached a couple of thousands, I, uh, I kind of whenever I post, I get a lot of reach, so it's all about the reach and the engagement in the group, and uh, basically that's when I realized I can provide more value, even if, let's say, I wanted to sell something, it's, uh, it's free traffic, pretty much. Free traffic, and it builds authority, it builds your branding, and uh, more importantly, you get to help entrepreneurs, and you get to talk with entrepreneurs all day long. Yeah, rewarding. It is. Yeah. Yeah, it really is rewarding. What I really loved about it at first was just the idea of building a community and being able to connect with other entrepreneurs. But as it started growing, and like he said, once it once it hit, like that first couple thousand members was kind of slow, but then it really started to just grow quickly. And I realized that this is very much like a distribution channel where you have your own community and you're able to put out a message and create content and really uh, build yourself as an authority and kind of do all these things. And so it just became something that spiraled quickly and I just really 
like I started focusing on delivering the value and creating a message and a brand around the community, and then uh, yeah, it just started really taking off quickly from there. Hmm. Uh, I'd say I probably realized it about two years ago, actually. I remember uh, there was maybe, ooh, I don't know, maybe 10,000 people in the group at the time, uh, and uh, I did a post uh, asking if anybody wanted to meet up at, the, at uh, ASC in New York, if anybody wanted to meet up for dinner. Okay, I was expecting maybe 10 people to reply and I could just like make a dinner reservation and it'd be set, you know? Uh, and uh, uh, I had 150 people respond in the comments that we're all be gonna be in New York. So I ended up throwing the first uh, ad buyer meet up there. And um, we had like 200 people or so. Uh, and uh, uh, and th then I realized it was golden. So I started creating groups for, and then I started creating groups basically for everything that kept being in the main group and that needed to be kind of uh, organized, so like a job board and an influencer marketing and email marketing and just stuff that was like clogging it up to try to like organize it better. And of your 12 groups, what percentage is ad buyers group in terms of your focus? Is it pretty even or is it? No, no, it's definitely my main focus. Yeah. Uh, uh, probably like 80%. Yeah. Yeah, so we actually started a group because like there's so many people just private messaging me. It's kind of taking up a lot of time. So, and the questions are usually very similar from everyone that's, yeah. so I was like, my friends just say, why not just do a group, right? So it just kind of like uh, put everyone into the same group, like post some value in there. And like, I remember I met one guru in the US. He said, dude, stop doing Facebook groups. They're like leeches. They're not gonna like support you or whatever. But uh, I found a lot of great value in terms of networking, meeting a lot of great people, and also like you know posting a lot of value and helping a lot of people gives me a, lot, a good sense of satisfaction. And like I mean, we have been doing a few events as well, masterminds. You know, like those are like the Singapore one that we did. It's about 700 people, and I mean just from the group itself, filled 95% of all the tickets and our high-end masterminds as well. Everyone just comes because like, there's value that you give and in turn when you post something, people support you because like, of all the things that you contribute to the group too. Are you guys all in each other's groups? Yeah, yes. I mean, yeah. everyone's group, yeah. <laughs> That's right. It's, it's, it's great to see like, all this, like, like Tim, Nick, and Mo. That we, I mean, everyone's so, like, sharing so much content for free. Like, I mean, like, even some of the information that I've seen in their groups, like it's worth more than like courses, like charging like two, three thousand dollars. You know, I mean, there's so much great content in all these uh, groups right now. And it seems like it's a bit of a hack. Like I know Facebook has been really, they're really good at, uh, you know, charging you to reach your own audience essentially. But are groups sort of like an end around to that? Like do they, because you, you, you get, you know, they, people join your groups freely and then do they then control it, whether they see your posts or not? Or is it sort of like free for all? If they come to your groups every day, they're going to see your content every day. Uh, groups actually do uh, are prioritized in Facebook's algorithm. Um, uh, basically once Facebook changed their mission statement about a year ago or so, uh, saying that they wanted to focus on building communities. Um, uh, you'll find that with, you know, if you have a thousand members in a group versus a thousand likes on a fan page, you'll get about like 10 times or so the engagement on a group than you will on the, on the page. Um, even if it's the exact same thousand people. So Facebook's definitely uh, pushing it more because they know that if, you know, a post on a fan page, okay, whatever, but a group like keeps you on Facebook, which keeps you getting ads. Um, so Facebook is actually like incentivized to keep you on there. So they, you definitely, it's definitely prioritized, yeah. Interesting. How, okay, so you probably all have a very like wide scale of people on your groups. You probably have people who are similar to yourselves doing, you know, six, seven figures, big numbers, but then you have a lot of newbies on there. How do you balance um, helping the people uh, who are going to maybe ask the same simple repetitive questions with still providing value to the really high-end marketers who frequent your groups? Uh, honestly, in my case, I always refer to the search button. <laughs> so uh, whenever, like, uh, we use tags. For instance, uh, when I post value in my group, we, I tag it like hashtag tip of the day. Okay. So basically, if it's something that I posted about and they ask a question, I just refer them to search for tip of the day. So basically, they see all the posts where the value is. And uh, if sometimes, like if they post asking about something and I know it has been answered before, it's my group, and I kind of have really good memory. So I just search it for them and I post the link okay. and I tell them to search. Let me Google time. that for you. <laughs> let me, let me search much. that for you. Yeah. 
Yeah, I found that it was taking up a lot of time in the beginning because I wanted to be in there and answering questions. But what I realized over time is that the culture that I was building by doing that, by spending so much time and showing how much I cared, eventually, you know, there's group ambassadors now that I didn't even have to ask. I didn't have to say anything. They just love it. They're part of it because of what they've received from it already that they take care of all of that. I see every day, you know, because you can't stop that. People are going to come in and be lazy and ask questions that have already been answered, but I don't have to go there now because other people are jumping in like, hey man, check the pin post. Hey, just search it over here, you know, and so like it's almost taken care of now at this point. Yeah. Uh, it's actually been a real challenge, honestly, because uh, I started my group and it was in the beginning really only an intermediate and advanced guys. Um, and it was, so everybody was kind of on the same level, uh, you know, the first five or 10,000 people, more or less. Uh, and then once I was, once I started buying a little bit of traffic, uh, uh, it was mostly newbies, which is, uh, which is fine. But then it was kind of annoying the advanced guys that didn't want to see those questions. And then there's so many, the same question, like every three days almost. And the search function in the groups is really bad. Um, so what I did to, to kind of combat that was I made like a local business group for all the people that were asking those questions were mostly like local businesses. For the hundred just, bucks a month kind of spenders or the thousand yeah, bucks a month kind yeah, of spenders. Yeah, exactly. And I just like push them in there and that's like more for them. Yeah. Uh, and, then, uh, and then for the questions that get just asked all the time, I just decided to make them into like little articles or tutorials and post them on adleaks.com and then so people could just refer that and then I can actually own that traffic rather than Facebook owning that traffic. Nice. Yeah, so um, we actually do like um, golden nuggets. So we do like searchable index posts that I did in the group. So it actually didn't came by myself. Like one of our moderators suggested that, like makes it easy for everyone to join the group. So they actually collected all the good posts in the group, and indexed it, and put it as a pin post. So in that way, when everyone's come in, we'll just tell them, search the golden nuggets, read up the pin post, look up all the good content in there, and it's so much easier for us. We don't have, and like, we have like 25 moderators in the group, like, and all these are people that's doing like five, six figures, even up to seven figures per month. Those people are our moderators, they vet through. I don't even approve like new members right now. I don't even check new posts, but they do everything for us. Like we do like some sort of mastermind on the site, but they kind of approve all the questions that's coming into the group. So like if, if it's a really newbie question, it doesn't get approved or any scammy services or whatever, it's all blocked before it's even posted. Yeah. Mm. So you've got, you've got golden nuggets, knowledge bombs, <laughs> tip of the day. So these are your branded like knowledge things. You got you got one, uh, Nick? No. Well, for me, honestly, I think it's like it is a challenge. But for me, I've really looked at it as like this. This group has definitely become a business, you know, yeah. in the way that it works and it functions, and it's not just like a community anymore. It's a business that's taken me around the world and built like some really cool things for me. So. I look at it just like any business. I know who my target audience is. I know who I'm really, so like, yeah, you know, I want to cater to everybody. I want the big people to be in there, the high spenders, the people that are like the big names that are doing well. But I know that's not really my blue ocean. That's not really like where I'm focused and where I'm angled at. So like I have things like we have the files set up and you know, I have a membership site that's all linked in where people can index and see all this stuff. But at the same time, like I'm really focused on who I'm focused on because I know that that's what's building the group and getting me to where I want to be. So like I'm just not as focused on the other stuff, really. That makes sense. What have you ever had any? I, I think it was in Tim's group. I, this is a bad example, but it was a really weird question that came up. Like a really like, do you ever get like really weird questions? Can you think of a, like someone who's popped in there that's been like, maybe or is it like, or do you get trolls? Like do you, do you ever have to deal with trolls? Oh, absolutely, all the time, and I, I love them. What do you do? You just do you them. troll especially, them back or Especially what? sometimes you, you approve someone and they go and they spam. And then now what I do in my group, I follow along. So like click on this link to start making $500 a day. And I'm like, oh my God, how do you make this? And they, they answer, like they reply to my comment not knowing that I'm, I'm the admin. And we have some little fun and then the band hammer. Then the band hammer. <laughs> Thank you, goodbye. Yeah. Same deal? Yeah, I mean, some, yeah, I use the band a lot when it's just like nonsense. But at the same time, I do think that uh, one of the cool things, you know, that you get the ability to do with a group is show your personality. So, 
Like, and I, I think it's one of the reasons that my group has been effective is that if people like are trolling or trying to call out, I'll troll them right back. I'll yeah. be, you know, I'll come right back at them and be like, look, man, like you say a stupid comment, I'm going to make come you look me, dumb, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, but people like that and I'll get like, you know, sometimes on a comment, I'll be getting more likes than I'm seeing other groups get on an entire post or like a pin because people love that interaction. They love to see you're real. They love to see that you're not just going to, you know, so I, I think it's cool to respond sometimes and not just ban all the time. But if it's just nonsense, then I just ban them. Got an itchy trigger finger on that. Uh, I just ban them right away. Um, <laughs> you don't fuck around. I, I didn't for a long time. A lot of the trolls are my friends, actually, in, like in real life. Yeah. But they like to troll online, and it's just their thing, you know? And, uh, and I get it. But, uh, you know, it's funny, actually. I allowed it for the first couple of years. Um, and, uh, but it kept newer people, uh, which I love helping, too. And it, it kept them from feeling comfortable answering, uh, asking questions, because then they would just get chewed out. And, and you know, and the, these, the trolls would just, like, give, like, uh, you know, these... BS answers like uh, go to this website and buy this course and it's like they know everyone else in the group knows it's like the worst thing you could do but like the newbie doesn't know yeah um, so I actually found that the, the group actually started to grow uh, much more organically and have a lot more engagement as soon as I actually started banning all those trolls and just and making people have to be nice to each other yeah um, it, when people were being rude or being mean to newbies uh, it really stifled the, 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 the growth of the group yeah I totally agree with Tim because like I kind of used to be like super nice Right, but kind of the, the trolls takes advantage of all this. So like sometimes they will just come to your group and criticize what you're doing. You should do this, you should do this. So I remember when I posted when I bought my Lumbo, right? So this guy was like, that's how you get poor. I was like, all right, here you go. Right click, ban, permanent ban. Because like there's no point. This is how, this is my group. I like, yeah. I post whatever things I like. I motivate people with the things, the lifestyle, whatever, right? And people like it. So I don't see why they should come into, these trolls should come into the group and kind of like, teach you how to do things because like everyone has their personality and like last time we used to like private message the guys that's trolls could you be nicer to the newbies don't sound so yeah. rude right but like some of them are my personal friends so I kind of tell them you know just be quiet just treat it you didn't see the question so like eventually it gets to a point where but like as Tim said you have to kick them out because like it just takes a toll in your management of the whole group when it's like a big group it takes a lot of time and effort to manage all these people yeah and people like pile on if one if somebody starts being mean to somebody then other people think it's okay to do that too uh, and then they start doing it and then it just changes the whole dynamic of everything you really just have to get rid of those people in my opinion and you guys set the tone with your posts right you set the tone with the positivity and the the knowledge bombs nuggets tips of days all these things um, do you schedule your posts? Like, do you know in a week like when you're gonna make posts, or do you just sort of have it organically as you think of it? Uh, actually, I kind of track when my Facebook group is most active oh. because we have people from all over the world, and I kind of like my group around three to four p.m. Eastern. That's when most people, I guess, in the East Coast and West Coast are like live and kicking. That's yeah. when I post. I used to schedule all my tips of the day. I actually write them down beforehand. It sucks that we don't have scheduled posts yet on Facebook. At least I don't have my group. And uh, I write them down and then I just copy paste. Sometimes I just go with the flow. Sometimes like I face a challenge in my business or I find a solution to something or I get a question on private message or email from someone yeah. and I kind of do a post about it, but that's about it. Yeah. You guys schedule or none? No, I don't schedule. That's in it is interesting with the group insights now because you can see that, but uh, you know, for me, I think I've found that generally if I post something and like I'm really trying to like if it's content or get a message out or something that there's like a 48 hour window that I have to give, you know, regardless of when the engagement time is highest, that there's people from all different time zones. So I know that I have to give it like a 48 hour window to get the full engagement that it's going to get for people to see it. Yep. So like I, I tend to not try to post too many times in a week. Like I really try to make it quality when I have something to say or when I want to get something out there and that way I know can get the full amount of engagement over a period of time. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, uh, I don't. I don't like to overpost personally myself unless it's something of value. Uh, and uh, and I do schedule posts actually sometimes um, uh, uh, because I know you know what days of the week. And if I'm trying to hit the Asia market, I'll post like at a certain time, or the European market at a different time, U.S. market at a different time, because the peak times are different for each one depending on if it's an event I'm throwing or something. But uh, but the scheduled post feature has been broken for like a couple of weeks now for me at least or it doesn't actually post, so it's been kind of annoying, but. Hmm. Yeah, I wish I could do more scheduled posts too, because like I've tried, I think that, po that, that function wasn't like pushed out to Asia before, so I was like, so 
checking out all these features and I just post like you know when I feel like it and probably I need to research into more like time zones or different kind of things from you guys, right? But um, I try to post probably at least once or twice per week. You know, it kind of like um, makes the group know that this guy is still around. But you know, sometimes when you're traveling a lot, I'll just post them. I'll just say, you know, guys, I'm traveling. You know, please give me some time. I'll get back to you guys slower. But you know, try to be nice while I'm away, and people enjoy. Like, you know, I'll do it sometimes. Like when I, the the last Phuket holiday, I was there before the Q4, so I told them like I'll do a, um, ask me anything with them. So everyone was like waiting for me. So I was at the holiday place and just doing that for them. Yeah. Nice. Um, it's a, yeah, it's just, there's just so much value, I think, that happened in these groups. Why do you think it's so important for people to, to have these groups as part of their arsenal as entrepreneurs? Why do you think, why do you think they've, they flock to them so much? They would be on their own otherwise. That's it, because they're, they're, yeah, they're solo entrepreneurs, right? And like, no one, no one people, any, anybody that's ever tried to, to, to start a business or do any of this by themselves typically fail. Um, yeah, whether, if, whether it's just even just someone that can understand what you're going through uh, or give you advice, you know, of how to start a corporation or how to, you know, just the, anything. You just, you need to go, you need to have a little team or at least some support or something. Uh, and it makes you feel it's part of a community and I mean, it makes it a lot easier. That's why coming to the con conventions is nice also. You get to meet people that are like-minded as well. Um, you know, it's, I think it's part, it's why Facebook is changing their, their change their mission statements because community is such an important thing to people on like a, like a human level. It, it, you hear a lot about the internet and like people being separated and you know, uh, you know, living in their little bubbles and stuff like that, but like I'm part of this, I'm part, you know, we all share this community, right? And you're, it, throughout your work day, it, sometimes it gets overwhelming just having to you know, joke or rib or you know, like, but the amount of, the amount of community that we, that we share is like, like, you don't think insurance ingesters have that. You know, you don't think like, you know, restaurateurs aren't like all day long, like, seeing what each other is doing and, and jumping off from it. It's a really kind of unique opportunity, I feel like. Yeah, I agree 100%. I've, I've actually been almost surprised by how many people like consider it a home. You know, people have reached out to me, sent messages, or posted in the group like how they're inspired, how this motivates. Because being an entrepreneur can be a lonely journey, just like he was saying. So it really, like for me, the focus is on the community first and the vision of, you know, everybody supporting each other and helping each other. And that's really come true. And, you know, you have big names that come in here that are doing massive numbers and they'll share like a screenshot or some tips and that just motivates everybody, you know, yeah. me, myself and Included. So it's like it's really cool for everybody to just have that kind of that community there that everybody connects on. That uh, you brought the screenshots and screenshots are like I feel like they're the lifeblood in a lot of ways, right? Uh, Black Friday was amazing in all your groups, like just seeing everyone like bam, bam, bam. H how important are screenshots in your groups and like how do they make you feel when you see good ones? That's just kind of silly. Bad. No. <laughs> Yeah, so I think I only I posted in a few screenshots in a few groups, right? <laughs> I kind of like, a few <laughs> did you? I didn't know. <laughs> so initially, when of course when we hit those crazy numbers, I, we felt super excited, right? So I posted in Tim's and like um, Neil, um, Nick's group. So these guys are really cool about it. Some gurus kind of like deleted my post because it's, it's getting too much attention, and it felt like you know this guy is like you know taking all the information, but. It's always when I post screenshots, there's a lot of information that I share and, and how we achieve it. And I also like, I'll, I'll, tell, I'll message Tim and Nick and say, hey, is it cool for, for me to post it? And if you're not cool, it's fine. You know? But uh, I think screenshots actually give, it really depends on what kind of audience you're targeting, right? So recently I saw a $1 million screenshot, right? So for me, like, I know it's a number that I want to hit, so I feel very motivated because I know it's possible. Definitely, probably something goes like a long way, probably this guy has like a great brand or maybe a celebrity or something, right? But it kind of shows the, I did a video and said, I talk about it, it's like it kind of shows the potential of e-commerce. So, I mean, everyone has to take things positively instead of like, oh, this guy is a scam, you know, what, is this numbers real? I mean, if, if people take this kind of uh, motivation as, positivity stuff, it's going to go a long way. So I think when I was just getting started last year, we are just, you know, checking out, I was like, this guy is doing like crazy numbers. I'm going to beat him really quickly. So that's kind of like our like screenshot that we put in our wallpaper and everything. So for me personally, it's a great motivation when I see them. Yeah. Definitely to add to what he said, there are like in my group or most of the groups that I'm in, there are two types of screen, uh, screenshots that are the motivation screenshots that actually come with the story or how they did it. 
and there is the bragging screenshots. As far as the bragging screenshots goes in my group are forbidden. Yeah. You post them, you're banned. I think Tim's the same. You can't brag? Hell no. What's the point? <laughs> What's the point of posting one million dollar oh, like screenshot if you don't tell people how you did it? Or give give away some value exactly, along with like it. Exactly, yeah. like how you did it, what's the story behind it, what challenges at least did you face? Yeah. So you know, people like feel motivated because screenshots are all about motivation or it's your personal challenge, you overcome it. Well, it's good to tell people how you overcome it, but if you're just posting to brag about it, that's kind of bad. Ben Hammer yeah, there's, no, there's no value there. Yeah. So, there's no value in just a exactly. screenshot. Yeah. And it could be potentially fabricated even. Have you guys ever ventured onto Reddit, the community? I, I, was, I was just on the e-commerce community for Reddit. They're a bunch of assholes. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I, think, I think the thing with Reddit, because they can hide behind the username. Yeah, that's right. So they right. can say whatever the hell they want. On Facebook, it's like your picture and your name. So whatever you say, you're actually responsible for it, even legally now. Yeah, oh really? Yeah. Keyboard warriors, yeah. you know, they don't have to show their face, they can yeah. speak whatever they want, you know. I think it's an old school, new, th new school thing too. I think there was a lot of people on there that have maybe been doing e-commerce for the past 20 years or whatever, and you guys really represent the sort of, you know, the new breed of like high scale, uh, you know, exciting entrepreneurs, and I think there was a little bit of that in that particular instance, but I was like, I'm never coming back here. <laughs> Except every day for all my news and everything else. I also just have, this is totally irrelevant, but I have to say, uh, uh, Steve down there is the only guy in the conference with crazier shoes than me. So oh, thanks. You nice. have great shoes too, bro. Nice. <laughs> nice. Okay, cool. So uh, we talked a little bit about, um, like, do you actively prune your groups? If, or do you cut people that are, that are non-active? Do you try to, do you do, you do that? Uh, I don't, actually. Um, uh, but what I do uh, do a little group hack uh, for everybody that wants to start one already has one is I actually have uh, I have a bunch of admins and moderators and whatnot but I have uh, my assistant is one of the moderators also and I have her go every single day uh, and delete anything that got little to no engagement and uh, that's at least 24 hours old mm. um, because then it increases the overall engagement rate of the group um, and then Facebook will show your post to more people um, organically um, so anything that just didn't get an answer just gets deleted. Um, and then, uh, but from there, I don't really. There's a lot of lurkers of people that don't like or comment, but that look at every post or that you know are in there all the time. And I, people, people come up to me all the time in person and will tell me this, and that's why I wouldn't want to like delete someone just because they never did anything, because they could still be a very active member. They so could, many lurkers you know, out there. There's yeah. So many lurkers, and I get it. You know, I'm a lurker in a bunch of groups too, where I don't necessarily want to post, but uh, you know, I like reading and whatever. So you know, I, I get it. I don't want to. I should. I, don't, I, don't, I wouldn't delete in person. I definitely agree with Tim because like there's so many people that don't comment, but when you when but they'll buy all your stuff when you post it, and it's like I've tried I tried it before. So when you post something that you really want them to like, they will do that for you. But I've seen some groups that do like purges or something. You know, it's kind of like you want to purge out all the people that's not active. But some people, are, I mean, are natural introverts, right? They don't like to comment too much, but they do read up all your stuff. So I think not a good way to kind of purge it too. And there are some people that are just afraid to post. I had people reach out to me and they're like, either I don't speak good English, I cannot write English, or, or my question will sound too newbie to the rest of your group, etc. And that's why like in my group you say it doesn't matter if you're an expert or a newbie, post your question and I will either answer it or someone else will jump in and help you. So it's not just lurkers from the sense of they are just lurking, but some people are actually afraid to post and they have their own challenges to do so. That makes sense. Yeah, and the other thing I do is just preventative, really. I don't really purge people unless I ban them because they're just, you know, not following the rules. But since it's a closed group, I decline almost as many people as join, um, which I can see now with the group insights. You know, I would be over 50,000 members at this point if I didn't decline so many people. But I do that as a way to try to keep the quality of the group. Uh, as good as possible, you know, or have, having the people that like just look like fake profiles or really new profiles or no profile picture or they joined like 2,000 groups, yeah. like, you know, yeah. just decline, decline, decline. Yeah. Um, do you guys get recognized? Do you ever get stopped? Do you ever get like, oh, I know you from the group? Yes. Yeah? yeah? <laughs> yes. How do you feel about it? You, you like that? A little, little ego boost there? Uh, depends. <laughs> depends on the person, yeah. <laughs> depends. Sometimes it's like super awkward. Yeah. I was, uh, I was like in Toronto and someone stopped me in Starbucks and I was like, can I take a selfie with you? I'm like, who are you? He's like, I'm in your group. Okay. Yeah. And sometimes like, oh, dude, I tried something you posted and it did not work. Huh. And I hate you for that. I'm like, oops. Oops. <laughs> Sorry. 
It doesn't really happen often to me unless I come to events like this, you know, yeah. and, then, and then I get recognized. But, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, it's, it feels good, you know. Yeah, of course. course it does. Yeah. <laughs> I like uh, it. Yeah, same, same for me. It doesn't really happen when I'm just like walking around randomly, uh, you know, uh, in the real world, so to speak. But at, at any of the events and stuff, it happens a lot. And I like it. I like when people come and tell me, hey, I learned a lot or, uh, you know, this really worked for me or like you helped, you know, you helped me grow to the next level or you know, I like hearing like the, the, the success story and their feedback on it so I can make it better for everybody else, too. Nice. I think, I think everyone here enjoys it. I mean, yeah. I'm no different Can't as well. Lie. Yeah, so I was just walking around just now there waiting for the interview. So I was like, hey, your screenshot is like super big motivation for me. And I really break through like my traditional thinking that like what kind of numbers I can do. So it's like he's been hitting new numbers because of what we posted. So that's great feedback. And I love it too when people tell me that in person. Yeah. yeah. With my podcast, I just get people yelling at like, that was a weak question, or just like, you should you should ask them that. I can't believe you didn't ask them that. Like, there's a lot, like, it's less like, thanks for all the help, and more just like, you should do better. And so like, I'm trying. Uh, is there an ideal size for a group, or is just bigger better? We were actually talking about that uh, when we were backstage. Uh, I, I, a lot of you guys are probably in the ClickFunnels group, um, and, uh, and I've been in there since it was around maybe 40 or so, 1,000, 45,000 members, something like that. And now it's over 100,000. But the quality has gone down. It's terrible now. There's spam, and none of the people that are behind ClickFunnels are really involved in the group anymore. Uh, so the, the quality of the questions and the answers and the moderation, everything's just gone downhill. So I, um, but I, I think that's just a problem. with. I think you have to have really good moderation uh, and, uh, and be very selective about who you let in. There's probably got to be, I don't know, 40,000 people in there that probably aren't ClickFunnels customers even, you know? Um, so uh, I, I think they just, I don't know. I, yeah, hard question. Yeah. yeah, I agree with that. I think it really comes down to moderation. Like what you said earlier about uh, deleting posts after 24 hours, that's a really good idea. I mean, I delete posts too, but I think you can let it grow, but I have noticed the engagement goes down the more it grows because your, your reach is lower, which is unfortunate. So I think it just comes down to being like moderating posts and deleting posts that aren't getting engagement. I feel it all comes down to the screening process that you do before accepting people. Right now, like I think we can ask three questions before accepting yep. uh, anyone. So if you're smart about these questions, you can actually have quality people in your group. And as long as the people are quality people, like you can grow it as much as you want. Yeah. But the screening process and the moderation are the keys to high engagement. Are there commercial like uh, like applications for groups? Like could you? Could you create a group on like Drone Lover? Like, are, are, are you guys experimented with that ever? Like, actually, like product based? I guess that's how you got started, right? With uh, with pit bulls. Exactly. That's yeah. how I got started with uh, pit bulls. So uh, that's a funny story, actually. I uh, I never owned a dog. <laughs> My first niche was uh, the pit bulls. Uh, basically, passionate, I, passionate people, those pit bull people. <laughs> so basically, the pit bull is a beautiful niche because it's controversial, and that's what all we want on Facebook, right? Engagement, people who hate it, people who love it, and then I love when people fight in the comments. Yeah, it's like high engagement. So basically, yeah, I had that group on uh, Facebook. It was uh, a couple tens of thousands, and uh, I pretty much asked people, "What do you want to buy?" Or uh, so they were like, yeah, we uh, we want something to represent our love for pitbull and stuff like that. So I went to I had a designer on Upwork and I created this little necklace and I was like, would you buy this? Everyone like, yes, 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 yes. So I set up like quick landing page with stripe on it. I'm like, here it is. Then it went to do like a couple hundred thousand dollars and it started from there. It's a really the Facebook great tip, pixel right? and everything. Do you still do it? Have you do you do it more with with new niches and stuff? I do, do it with new niches, but uh, honestly, to be honest with you, uh, the groups take so much time. Yeah. So I prefer just throwing money at ads. Yeah. Because it's way faster and way more control, but it's definitely a great way. And one thing is. When you have a group, like a niche group, they give you ideas. They give you ideas for content. They give you the problems that you need to fix with either physical or informational products, etc. So it's like you are in direct contact with your niche. And that's like a very, very valuable asset yeah. to have. Very cool. Yeah, I know a, a quick, this wasn't my group, but it was a girl I was working with who, it was in a, a beauty group, and she had a product that she had developed that was uh, makeup. and. You know, not a hundred thousand, but she did something like fifteen thousand. I was working with her, and it was just like all organic. It was so it was just all organic traffic from this group and selling a product. So yeah, I think there's a huge commercial application for it if you do it the right way. Nice, that's interesting. Okay, so if you guys aren't in these groups, you should just go and join all these groups as well as marketers while you're at it for the uh, STM family group. Uh, but go join Momentum Marketing Tribe, e-commerce empires, 
Ad Buyers Group, and e-commerce elite masterminds. Uh, I want to thank these guys for coming on the stage today and talking about this. The community is a super important thing, and we're all lucky to be in a in a job or in a you know a career where we have all of this amazing uh, you know community available to us. So use it. Thanks. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.